hours, the unemployed would queue out the front to check the early edition classifieds in their desperate search for a job. By the end of World War II, that had all changed. There were plenty of jobs, but a real shortage of labour. Migrants poured into Sydney and the city boundaries began to creep outwards. In the 50s, we began to sprawl outwards, ever outwards, and started to live the Australian dream. Homes with big backyards for big families, the Holden in the driveway, and billy cart races down the street. I was born in the key suburb of Cogra, and I didn't know it was a suburb. I thought the world was like that. I thought the world was flat and occupied entirely by these little brick bungalows with a quarter of an acre of ground around them. So it was quite in vast years before I moved out there and realised there was such a thing as Sydney. It seemed to me an idyllic existence even at the time. It's no surprise that neighbours conquered the world. It's really about the way, what a peaceful life is like. Not very thrilling, sometimes flat out banal, but, uh, but rather wonderful. The building boom continued into the 60s and 70s. Trouble was, we were demolishing the old and grand to make way for the merely new. Magnificent buildings were obliterated by the wreckers' ball. The Queen Victoria building itself came very close to being torn down. The unlikely saviour of Sydney's heritage was a red-blooded unionist called Jack Mundy, with a little help from the Builders' Labourers' Federation. They placed what they called green bands on many of the buildings earmarked for demolition in the rocks in Woolloomooloo. The BLF took on the developers and the Askin government, and they won. The beach suburbs south of the city centre were only a few kilometres away, but it may as well have been another world. This was Chico Roll and Panel Van country. If this van's rockin', don't come knockin', as Cathy Lett recalls. It was hideous where I grew up. I hated it. It was the most sexist place in the world with the Australian suburbs in the 70s. So it was a very difficult place to grow up in, which is why I ran away from home really early. I left the suburbs when I was 15. You know, the only examination I've ever passed is my pap smear. Um, but you can understand why I had to get out of there. I mean, those men, they actually disproved the theory of evolution. They were sort of evolving into apes. But at that age, you have no objectivity on what's happening to you. I thought that was normal. They also thought sex drive meant doing it in the car. I mean, in the 70s, everyone had sex in the car. It's very, very sad.